Hello, my loves. I hear you would like to learn some chemistry, and I am here for you. Let's do it. Uh, I just happen to have uh, this random document to share with you. Um, let's do it. I have so much to tell you. Let's make sure this works. There we go. Uh, boop, boop, boo. There we go. Huh. I just moved. My apartment looks weird and crazy. It's fine. Everything's fine. Uh, I wonder if I can make this screen bigger. Nope, it's cool. All right, so let's talk about chemistry. So you are uh, talking about stoichiometry. You got a stoichiometry test coming up. So um, I made so many notes for you because I love you, obviously. Can I make this smaller? Yes. Uh, okay, so stoichiometry. Remember that stoichiometry is just how chemists talk about um, how can we predict how many chemicals of one thing will make, uh, how many grams of one thing will make something else. That's literally all it is. It helps us determine, um, you know, if you're taking a medication, how much of a bad byproduct will it make? If you're producing something, how much will you, how much, what's the least amount of product you need to make the reaction you need to save costs, et cetera, et cetera, who cares? Uh, and so uh, we actually talked about this a lot. So remember, whenever you're given a reaction, um, when it gives you something, like down here, you have this reaction. And step one is to always look at a reaction and say, hey, is it balanced? Because due to the law of conservation of mass, we always must have the same number of atoms on one side that we end up with. And so right here, you see you have two hydrogens, two hydrogens, happy time. Two oxygens, oh no, only one oxygen. And you're not allowed to just put a two here because that changes the chemical completely. It goes from water to hydrogen peroxide and you cannot drink hydrogen peroxide. Don't do it. Okay, so what we do instead is we say, okay, cool. I'm going to put a two in front, which says that I actually end up with two water molecules. And because of that, now I have four hydrogens. I'm going to put a two here. Here, so now I have four hydrogens on that side. Again, I'll check my oxygens, two oxygens. Now I have two times one, two oxygens. Hey, it's balanced. Excellent. It is always step one to stoichiometry is to make sure you balance. Now, I can think about this as molecules, or I can think about this as moles, which is just a chemical quantity we talked a bunch about. Don't worry too much about it. Just pretend it says molecules if it makes you feel better. Um, it's Remember, what it actually is is a way to convert the periodic table. The, oh, that is a picture of my friend's garden. Whoops. Oh, I'm going to go insane. Here we go. It's to convert the periodic table. Oh, my God. Good thing I already got fired, huh? Uh, convert the periodic table numbers, which are great. Uh, these are in atomic mass units um, to um, something usable in real life, which is grams per mole, uh, which is so in every, um, if you uh, look at this now, instead of saying atomic mass units, uh, there's 14.1 atomic mass units in nitrogen, which has to do with how many protons and neutrons it has. Now I'm saying there's 14.01 grams for every mole of nitrogen, which means since it's grams, I can work with it. I can actually put that on a scale, measure it, uh, and figure out what's going on, right? Um, okay, cool. So what do I want to do here? Okay, so now I have two moles of hydrogen gas plus one mole of oxygen gas gives me two moles of water. Okay, fabulous. So let's think about what that means. So we can do what are called mole-to-mole -mole ratios, which is literally when you just compare two chemicals in a reaction. Okay, so here if we want to look at, if we were to do the mole ratios of this equation, and I'm actually going to move this up here as an example. Boop, boop. Okay. For example. For example. If I have this reaction, okay, which we just did, uh, the mole ratios... Mole ratios are just, uh, you compare two chemicals. So the mole ratios, like if I want to say, what's the mole ratio between hydrogen and oxygen? I'm just saying, how many hydrogens do I need for as many oxygens as the reaction gives me? So for it's going to be for every... Ooh, and of course, you'll be writing this because it's a test, whatever. For every two moles of hydrogen, I would then... Oh, this is annoying. Google, why you do this to me? Oh, did y'all miss my craziness? I miss y'all. Uh, for every two moles of hydrogen, the reaction calls for one mole of oxygen. Okay, one mole of oxygen. Okay, you could also say, you could also reverse this and say that for every one mole of oxygen, uh, I will need two moles of hydrogen. Okay? It's like saying a sandwich or something more exciting because we always say sandwich as the example and that's very boring. Uh, ooh, 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 here. Oh my goodness. Beep, boop, boo. 
Do you miss my singing? Okay, so uh, for every two moles of hydrogen, we need one mole of oxygen, which also, if we look at it the other way, we say for every uh, one mole of oxygen, I need two moles of hydrogen. You could also say, okay, wait, if I have two moles of hydrogen, I'm going to end up with how many? I'm going to end up, I'm going to just copy and paste so I don't have to... Uh, I'm going to end up with two moles of water, okay, or two moles of H2O, right? Two moles of H2O. Uh, same thing if for every one mole of oxygen. Whoop, uh, according to this reaction, I end up with two moles of water. Again, so if I just look at my equation and whatever this says with the number in front, I compare to whatever else I'm looking at. You can also reverse it and say... Um, for every two moles of hydrogen, I would end up with uh, one mole of oxygen or one mole of hydrogen. Okay, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We can do this for all the possible combinations. And the reason why is because we then use this to do conversions, right? So that's fine. But what if I don't have two moles of hydrogen? Because two moles of hydrogen has a mass of four grams. That's so little. What if I actually need a whole bunch? Because I'm going to uh, make a, I don't know, do some huge experiment. Um, okay, so I need to find out. How, okay, so I know this is the basic reaction, but what if I want to scale it up? Okay, so we can do what are called mole to mass conversions so remember your mole conversion chart that we talked about and if you don't don't worry about it all you need to remember is that the period oh here we go again the periodic table so this is what i get for saving this as an, as an image uh the periodic table gives you grams per mole okay grams per mole so what's happening here is if i have calcium which is 40 grams per mole but i what and so it's i know that the uh the definition of calcium is 40 grams per mole okay because that's what the periodic table gives you is a definition okay but i don't have one mole i have five moles that's my given okay just think about like a ratio normally you have 40.08 grams for every one mole but now i have five moles so how many grams is that so you could the way we set it up in class was we said okay so i want x grams so i remember what i'm looking for specifically i want grams of calcium okay so i'm going to put and i think what we did in class when we did it is we put what we are uh we put the given first okay so actually this is the given okay and we put that over one so five grams per mole and then i multiply by the definition so it's always given and then definition okay so i have five moles and i'm going to do something with the definition i can either multiply or i could divide well if i multiply i get grams on top okay and i get moles on the bottom and then moles are going to cancel out right and you end up with moles times grams over moles so you end up with just moles so you end up with five times 40 which is 204 moles of calcium oh it's not moles ah, grams of calcium which is what we're looking for yay so in order to go from mole moles to mass you multiply molar mass which is from the periodic table uh periodic table uh by the moles given uh -huh to get grams okay so we multiply this way and if you're like i don't remember just look at how your dimensional analysis is set up if i have moles but i want grams i'm going to multiply by grams per mole so that moles go away okay let's see if we go gram uh, mass to moles or grams to moles so since we multiply it up here we're going to do the opposite down here and again if that doesn't make sense just think about uh how do i go from moles to uh yeah i want moles but i have grams okay so this is what a tricky i wanted to like throw my cat says hello i wanted to throw in a little extra thing here where you remember your brinkelhoffs okay so your brink or your diatomics which means two atoms so remember brinkelhoff is how we remember it and so these are atoms where they always come in pairs, okay? Hydrogen is in the word Brinkelhoff, okay? I'm going to put Brinkelhoff up here. I'll put it at the bottom. Uh, so I'll put it at the very, very bottom. I have some extra um, uh, equations for y'all. Okay, so Brinkelhoff, remember? Brinkelhoff. Okay, those are the ones that are always paired, and these are the ones that can be trick questions because if it just says you have five grams of oxygen, how many moles? You must remember that oxygen is actually O2, not O, okay? Uh, okay, so that's what we did here. So for example, oxygen is 15.999 grams per mole. So this is a definition, but it always comes in pairs. So really it's O2, which means it's actually 32 times that. 
So 31.998 grams per mole or 32 grams per mole. Who cares? Okay, so how many moles do you have if you start with 100 grams of oxygen? Okay, well, so I'm going to set it up. So X moles of oxygen, that's what I'm looking for. So I want moles to end up on top. But my given is 100 grams. So I'm going to put given first. And you can just leave it that, like that or you can put over one. And then um, if we're doing the dimensional analysis way, you say grams over one times, and then you put your definition, which is from the periodic table. And I already figured out there are 32 grams or 31.998 grams of oxygen for every one mole of oxygen. But um, I want grams to be on the bottom in this case, so they cancel with my given. So I'm going to flip it, or I'm, which is the same thing as saying I'm going to divide it. Okay, so 100 grams over what I'm given from the periodic table is going to give you your answer. So 100 divided by 31.998 is 3.12 moles of oxygen. Okay, uh, excellent. But we don't deal in moles except to convert things between stuff on the periodic table. So really we deal in grams. So we want grams and we want to end up in grams on the other side or maybe we say we end somehow i have 15 grams of uh potassium nitrate how many potassium iodines did i start with okay in this case what we want to know specifically is how many grams of pbi so this is what i'm looking for uh are produced from 248 grams of ki so who cares about anything else in this reaction except for those two except step one is you must balance the equation I'm going to undo those. Okay, you must always look and balance your equation. And remember that these are just chemical states. They do not do anything else in the reaction. Just ignore them completely. Who cares? Ignore them forever. Okay, so um, uh, when we get to gas laws, it becomes important. Doesn't matter otherwise. Don't even worry about it. Okay, so balance the equation. So if I look up here, I have 1K. I have 1K. I have 1I. Remember the capital letter starts a new element. I have 1K. I have 1K. I have 1I. Oh, no, I have two I's. Okay, so I really I'm going to put, and I'm going to do it down here. I would have to put a 2 here, okay? Uh, now I have 2Ks, oh, so I'm going to have to put a 2 here for that one. I have 2Ks, 2Ks, 2Is, 2Is, 1PB, 1PB, 1NO3. I'm going to do it all together because it's NO3 here. It's also NO3 here, so I can treat it like a unit, okay? You could also just say, okay, I've got two Ns, I've got uh, two Ns, I've got six oxygens, six oxygens, okay? Uh, either way, you've got two of these and you've got two times this here. Hey, we're balanced! Fabulous. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, uh, yeah, I'll just leave it for now. Okay, so now I can, so that's step one, balance your equation. Now there's two ways to do this next part, and oh, I don't have extra room. Anyway, um, uh, I'm going to do it in two different ways. So you can do it stepwise, so step by step by step, and that's what I'm going to do first, and it's a four step thing, or you can actually con um, combine steps two through four all together and get, uh, and do it in just two steps, but let's do it this way first. So step one is your, look at what you're given. You're given grams of Ki, you have to convert to moles first, okay? So you're given grams of Ki, so you're going to convert to moles of Ki. So again, you're going to take the gram, the given, times the definition, which is from the periodic table, which I should put mole grams there, so grams of Ki. So Ki is, I'm going to go to my periodic table, and I'm going to say, okay, K is 39.1, I is 26.9. I just add those two together, and that is going to be, where did it go? Here we go. Uh, I add those together, and then I'm going to get the um, grams per mole, or the molar mass of Ki, okay? So it's 240, it's my given times my definition, but I want to flip it so the grams are on the bottom. So it's my given times one over my uh, gram, my grams per mole, right? So really it's 248 divided by 156. <gasps> there it is. There's your moles. But is that what I'm looking for? No, I want uh, grams of PI. Okay, so I definitely need to remember that that's what I'm looking for is grams of PI. Okay, but I have moles. But that's good because that's my next step. My next step is to take the moles and use the reaction in the mole to mole ratio, the reason why we do multiple ratios at all, and figure out how many moles of PI2 are created from however moles of KI I have, okay? So I have, want to know, okay, I have this, I want to know moles of uh, PB. I just figured out, and let me put this in the same um, way we did it. This is now my given, because I just solved for it. Okay, so I found that I have 1.59 moles of Ki. Okay, so that's my given. I want moles to go, uh, well, moles are going to go away. It doesn't matter. But look, this is where it's important to write your chemical because I want to end up in moles of lead iodine 
iodide. Uh, and right now I have moles of uh, potassium iodide. So I need that potassium to go away. So I'm going to use the mole ratio. So I have 1.59 moles of Ki. Normally though, according to my reaction right here, it, I have one mole of Pi, PBI, oop, which is here, right? Uh, for every two moles of Ki, right? Okay, so, uh, okay, cool. So we're looking at what I'm, I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, 1.59 times 1 over 2. It's going to be two, uh, 1.59 divided by 2 or 0.795 moles of PI. This is kind of the hardest one to think about because this is where you transfer from the original chemical you're looking at to the one you want to end up in. Just remember you look at that ratio and you say, okay, normally for every one mole of PI, because there's nothing here. Remember, chemists are lazy. If they don't have to write it, um, then they don't. But So if there's no number there, it means one. Okay, because if it was zero, they just wouldn't write it at all. Uh, and but so the, since all I care about in this reaction are these two chemicals, that's what I'm looking at. And that's what this step is all about. Converting from the fact that normally two moles of this give me one mole of this. Well, I don't have two moles of Ki. I have 1.59 K moles of Ki. So then I say I just set up a ratio. Another way you can do this, you can set it up as a ratio and you can say so much of chemistry is just ratio. Normally you have one mole of PB, ooh, PBI2 gives, uh, 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 gives you one mole of Ki. Well, I don't have, I need to find out how many moles of PB, ooh, PBI2, uh, given that I normally have 1.59 moles moles of Ki. And then you just cross multiply. It's the exact same thing. Uh, 1.59. Oops, it's not, I said that wrong. It should be a 2. Okay. That's the exact same thing. It's just set up slightly differently so that it's in our, our style here. Okay. Uh, cool. So I end up with uh, the number of moles that this many grams of um, Ki would produce, the number of moles of PBI2. Am I done? No, because I don't care about moles in the real world. That's only my conversion factor. So I actually need to continue on to grams of PBI. Okay, cool. So I have moles. Okay, so again, this I put this in the wrong way. Let me do it. So this is now my given because I just found it and I need to convert it. Okay. Whoop, here we go. So given my 0 0.795 moles of PBI2, how many grams is that? Well, I have moles on top. So if I use my definition where I know that um, according to the periodic table, According to the periodic table, PBI2 is 1 PB, or lead, which is 207.2 207 grams per mole, plus 2 iodines, which is uh, 126.9. I'm going to add those together to get my grams per mole. Okay, and so that's going to end up being, uh, so uh, 461 grams of PBI2 over for every one mole of PBI2. Okay, so this is my grams per mole, my given for, uh, periodic table definition. Um, but I don't have one mole of PBI. I have point zero, or 0 0.795 moles of PBI2. So that's why I'm going to take and I'm going to multiply that definition from the periodic table by the number of moles I was given. And you end up with 365 grams of PBI. That's your final answer because that's what the question asks. Oh, Ms. Noah, it looks like so many steps. What is happening? You can also do this in only two steps. The first step is still always balance the equation, okay? The second step is to, just like any other ones of these um, things, you start with your given and you need to end up with what you want, okay? So I'm given, the only thing I'm given here are my reaction, uh, is my reaction and also the number of grams that I'm starting with, right? So I want grams of PBI2. So I put X grams PBI2. I'm given 248 grams of potassium iodine. Okay, so how do I convert between these? Well, the very first thing I need to do is get rid of grams of Ki2. So I'm going to multiply by the period. This is from the periodic table. Okay, so one mole of Ki is actually 156 grams of Ki. Okay, and if I, con if I multiply these two together, then the grams go away and I'm just left with moles of Ki. I don't want moles of Ki. So I'm going to take, what's the next thing I can do? I can take that moles of Ki. I'll multiply, okay, for every two moles of Ki, I have one mole of PBI2. 
Okay, cool. So now I've gotten rid of moles, so I can uh, cancel that out. But now I have moles of PBI2. I need grams of PBI2. So now the final thing I multiply by is the periodic table definition of what P, uh, PBI2 is, which is, again, 461, which we just found up there, by doing um, uh, 207. That's lead, and this is 2 times I2. I feel like I'm not making sense. I really hope I'm making sense. Um, or if you do this, if you just look at the math part of it, okay, it's going to be 248 grams of Ki. Look and see all the things that are on top. So 248 bu 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 up times 461. Okay, that goes on top. And then in your calculator, in parentheses, okay, what's on the bottom? Okay, I have 156 on the bottom uh, times 2 here. And then you end up with 366.4 grams for PB, uh, PBI. Miss, no, that's not exactly the same. Oh, my God, it's so close, though. It's just a rounding error in your calculator. It doesn't matter. This is the same answer. Oh, my God, I hope this is making sense. Huh, let's do some together. All right, so let's look at this. Uh, we already balanced it, right? Okay. Maybe if we do it together, it won't be so... Uh, bleh. Okay. Uh, okay. How many grams of water is produced? This is, should be our produced. Just... Our produced when two... Through, ah, 6.5 grams of hydrogen reacts with oxygen. Okay. So, how many... So, we want to... How many grams of water, H2O, are produced when you are given 6.5 grams of hydrogen, which is H2? Okay. Cool. That's my, here's what I want. Here's what I give it. Okay, cool. So that's my step one. Okay. Step one, well, step one is to balance what we already did. Step two, I'm going to do this in one long step because I think it's much, much more easy. Um, but I also, we can break it down too if you want to. Okay. So 6.5 grams of hydrogen, but I don't want hydrogen. I want my hydrogen to be converted to water. Okay, well, so for every, uh, my mole ratio is I could either put hydrogen on top or I could put water on top, but um, I uh, need, oh, I can't believe y'all didn't even get to, anyway, uh, no feelings. Uh, and so what I need to do is, okay, I need hydrogen to be on the, hydrogen to be on the bottom so it'll cancel this, right? So, uh, oh, wait, step one, I'm in grams. I need those grams to go away. How do I get grams to go away? I deal with the periodic table. So according to the periodic table, hydrogen, Hello, why won't it go? It's going to make me do this. Okay, hydrogen is 1.01 .01 grams per mole. Okay, and there, we know that hydrogen, there's two, and don't look at this two, it's actually just this. Within hydrogen itself, there are two grams, uh, ooh, two times 1.08. Uh, is it 08? I feel like that's not right. 1.01, because it's 1.008, I think. Okay, whatever. Uh, 1.00, uh, I don't care. Oh, one, uh, here we go. Grams of hydrogen for every one mole of hydrogen, okay? But if I set it up this way so grams are on top, it's actually going to give me, it's not going to cancel out grams. So I actually want to set this up so moles are on top, okay? So I'm going to put moles on top. Okay, here we go. Mole, there's one mole of hydrogen, for every uh, two times 1.01 1, uh, 1 .01 grams of hydrogen. Awesome. Cool. So that gets me, now my grams have canceled. Let's, oh, I can strike out. Oh, I can strike out. Okay, so, whoop, strike out. That is going to cancel with not the math, but this, okay? Okay, so now I'm in moles of hydrogen. I don't want hydrogen. I want water. Okay, and I notice I put that as a boop. There we go. So I am going to say, okay, now I have moles of hydrogen. How do I get rid of moles of hydrogen and go to water? I look at my mole ratio. Okay, so for every two moles of hydrogen, H2, I actually, according to the equation, I get two moles of water. Okay, cool. But again, if I do it this way, I'm going to have moles of hydrogen on top. I already have moles of hydrogen on top. I want that to go away, so I need to put this on the bottom. So I'm going to actually flip it. Okay, it's like saying a dozen is 12 and 12 is a dozen. They're both the exact same thing because it's a ratio and a definition according to our equation. So we can totally flip it. It's mathematically allowed. Don't worry about it. Okay, cool. So now that means my one mole of hydrogen, or my mole of hydrogen unit, boop, is going to be gone. Floop. 
<sighs> okay. Uh, and now I'm left with my unit is moles of uh, water. But I don't want moles of water. I want grams of water. So now I'm going to do... Okay, cool. Um, I want grams to be on top. So I'm going to say by definition, water, according to the periodic table, is there's two uh, hydrogens. is 1.01 .01 for hydrogen plus one oxygen, which is 15.999 grams of oxygen. Oh, I don't like how this is two lines. Okay, excellent. For every one mole of water, H2O, okay? But does that give me what I want? Grams of water, H2O. Okay, so does that put grams of water on top? Yes, it does, because now, right now I have w moles of water on top. It's going to cancel with those moles of water on the bottom there. Okay, okay, cool. I don't like that, but it's fine. I don't like that's on the second line. Okay, cool. So now, just to like, because it makes me crazy to see all these things crossed out, I'm going to go through and I'm going to write just the things I need to math, okay? So now I end up with uh, 6.5 times... Uh, so I'm going to do all the times on top first, and then I'm going to do the divided. What else is on top? I have a 2 on top there. I have a the whatever. So this 2 times 1.01, .01, I'm just going to do it in parentheses, times 2 times 2.01 .01 plus 15.999. Uh, and that's everything, right? All That's all the stuff on top, okay? And then I'm going to divide by what's on the bottom of everything. There's nothing on here. There's a, this is two it's divided by two times 1.01. .01. And then anything else on the bottom? Oh, there's another two times two. And nothing else on the bottom there. Okay, cool. So my math now becomes, okay, 6.5 times two times, let's 6.5 times two times, I'm going to go ahead and do this, so 2.01 times, or 1.01 .01 times 2 is 2.02, 2.02, plus 15.999, my mass of water is 18.999, oh, 18.9, uh, okay, and then I'm going to divide this whole thing by uh, 2.02 times 2, okay, Excellent. And really, if you already look at this, you're like, Mr. I can cancel those twos. Cool. Do whatever. Whatever you want to do. Just do the math correctly. Okay. So now I'm going to add 6.5 plus, uh, oh, I'm not going to add. I'm going to multiply 6.05 times 2 times 18.019 is going to, this is, is that right? I hope so. 234. Oh, did I miss it? Nope. I guess that's right. Uh, 234.247 divided by 4.04. Uh, Okay, and so that means your final answer, and we know that the only units that we had left were grams of water, is so 2.342 divided by 4.04 is 57.98, that's 8.9, I need grams of water. But though that's so many steps, I know, but that is sadly how it is. Okay, so that is the answer to this. It's just gross and long. It makes a lot more sense when you do it. So if you're doing it along with me, oh, I didn't mean to do that. If you're doing it along with me, it makes much more sense than if you're just watching or listening to it. If you're just watching or listening to it, it makes no friggin' sense. So please make sure that you are actually um, also doing it. I want it to be smaller. So that's going to do it. That's fine. Okay, so let's do the next one as an example. And I'm going to give you a bunch of re um, um, things as... Uh, uh, I have a bunch of practice, but well, no, I'll do another example. Okay, so how many moles of oxygen react with 2.7 moles of hydrogen? So what I see when I see this problem, so it's using the exact same reaction. So I want how many moles of oxygen? Remember, oxygen is actually O2. Excellent. And I want to get, uh, and I'm given 2.7 moles of hydrogen, which is H2. Okay, the nice thing about this is it's moles to moles. So all we have to do is get rid of moles of H2 and give us moles of O2. Okay, so there's my given. 
or sorry that's yeah no, that's my given my definition in this case is just oh you can you can't see my face that's creepy the definition in this is just what's in the reaction okay so i have hydrogen i want oxygen i want hydrogen to be on the bottom but i only want oxygen to be on the top so you'll see already here there's nothing here that means in chemistry words that is one right so one mole of o2 whoop, o2 uh, is going to be, if I have oxygen reacting with hydrogen, oh, here's hydrogen, there's two moles of, of hydrogen, so that means two moles, H2 goes there, okay, and that means that my two moles of hydrogen will cancel, strike, mole hydrogen cancel, strike out, uh, and then my math just becomes 2.7, uh, times 1 over 2, which means 2.7 divided by 2, uh, which is uh, 2.7 divided by, okay, good, good, good. 2.7 divided by 2 is 1.35. And what is it? Oh, the only thing left is moles of O2, which is what I'm looking for. <gasps> Done. That's your answer. Oh, my gosh, it's so many less steps, so many fewer steps when you don't deal with grams. Oh, but you always deal with grams. Oh, except here. Oops, that's not this one, that's this one. Uh, how many grams of water are produced when uh, 4.5 moles of hydrogen react with oxygen? Okay, again, I just want to set it up this way. So what What did I do? What did I do? Oh, okay. I have whoop, X grams. How many grams of water? H2O, okay? I'm given 4.5 moles of hydrogen. Okay, cool. Uh, uh, okay, I have grams, uh, but I want grams when I'm given moles. Okay, so the first thing to do is get rid of moles of hydrogen. Okay, so that's my given. I'm going to leave it the way it is. Okay, you can't do anything to your given. I mean, you can divide by it. Usually we don't. There's no dividing. Okay, so how do I get rid of moles of hydrogen and get to grams of water? Well, the for first step is to go from moles of hydrogen to moles of water. Okay, so again, I look up here, hydrogen, water. Oh, it's the exact same mole ratio. So that's going to be wonderful. So I know there are, in according to the reaction, for every two moles of water, I needed two moles of hydrogen. Oh, y'all, I miss teaching chemistry. Okay, cool. And so that means that my moles of hydrogen go away. Strike up. Uh, that's going to cancel with my mole of hydrogen here. And by the way, the reason why we do it this way, um, oh, no, not that, is it helps us keep track to make sure we're doing the math the correct way. Okay. Okay. But, 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 but. Okay, uh, cool. But now I'm this makes sure that I'm not multiplying when it should be dividing, etc. So now I have moles of hydrogen, or sorry, of water on top, but I need grams of water, which means now I need to go to the periodic table because the periodic table is where all the grams come from. Okay, so if I want grams to be on top, I'm going to put grams on top of grams per mole. So I already figured out another problem that the that water is 18.019 grams of water for every one mole of water. And you might see people write mole as M-O-L versus M-O-L-E. It's the exact same thing. It's just a laziness thing, whatever. Okay, so cool. So now if I go through and I do the math, I take out all the extra stuff, because look, see, now what's happened is my moles of H2O are canceling. Boop, because there's one on top here. There's one on bottom here. Ooh, doo, doo, doo. Okay, and so now I can just like keep track of my numbers. Okay, so I have 4.5 uh, times 2 and then divided by 2 times 18.019. Okay, so these 2s actually go away, so that's nice. Okay, and I get 4.5 times 18.9, which is 4.5 times 18.019. Nine is 81.0. Uh, I'm going to make that a nine. Okay, I'm going to round up. And what's my only unit left? Grams of water. Hey, grams of water is what I'm looking for. Oh, I must be done. I'm done with this one. Excellent. Uh, this one didn't seem as long because it started in moles already, so you didn't have to convert to the first round of moles. Okay, fabulous. Let's do one more reaction, and then I have a bunch of practice problems for you to do where I'll give you the answer, and then you can figure out if you get the right answer, okay? 
Okay, so our new reaction is uh, nit oh, what is this? Ammonia plus oxygen gives us nitric oxide plus water. Cool. So remember, step one is balance. Okay. Step one, balance. Always, always, always check and make sure it's balanced. Okay. So I have one nitrogen. I have one nitrogen. I have three hydrogens. Oh no, I have two hydrogens. The easiest thing here is just to flip them. Okay. If I have three here but two here, I'm gonna put a two in front here and a three in front here because now I have six and six. Easy peasy lemon squeeze. Okay, so now again, I have two nitrogens. Oh, I only have one nitrogen. I'm going to put two in front there. I have six hydrogens, six hydrogens, two oxygens. Uh, uh oh, what? Uh, okay, no, two. Oh, this is fine because oxygen is by itself. Remember, oxygen is a bastard. It always, you always have to balance oxygen last because it's doing weird things and different things. So right now, I have two oxygens on this side. I have two times one and three times one. Oh no, that is, oh, we're going to have to do some weird stuff. So right now, I have five oxygens. So in order to balance, this would be 2.5. That's illegal in chemistry. You can't have halves in chemistry. Some people say you can, they're old. Don't listen to them. You can't have halves in chemistry so the way you get rid of that is you just multiply everything by two so this will be whoop that's two times two is four 2.5 times two is five two times two is four and three times two is six now make sure it's the smallest unit if i had multiplied everything by four then i'd get eight ten whatever I, it would be wrong so you, that would be bad okay but now let's go through and check i have four nitrogens i have four nitrogens Okay, cool. I have four times three hydrogens. I have six times two hydrogens. That's 12 and 12 hydrogens. Fabulous. I have 10 oxygens. I have four plus six, 10 oxygens. So I'm good. Uh, I've, I've got some, I'll give you some combustions to practice, especially for the final, because combustions are the hardest um, because they also use oxygen like this. But OK, we balanced. So step two, let's do the rest of the problem. Solve problem. <laughs> Okay, so I have, uh, let's see, what do I want? How many grams of NO? So I want X grams NO. I'm given 34 grams of ammonia, okay? 34 grams ammonia. The only thing that could be ammonia is NH3. There we go. So how do I, because uh, this is nitric oxide, because remember our, our naming rules. So this must be ammonia. Okay, so how do I go from, gra oh no, it's grams to grams. So this is going to be the longest version where the first thing I have to do is I have to say, here's my given and I need to make the grams go away and I need to get to moles, okay? So this is where I look at the periodic table and I say, it could be, so if I look at the periodic table, I see that I have uh, nitro, I have one nitrogen, which where are you, nitrogen is 14.01, okay? So that's going to be 14.01. Plus, I have three hydrogens, so three times 1.01, .01, which is what hydrogen is, okay? Uh, for every one mole of NH3. So that's according to the periodic table. But look what I did. This doesn't cancel because grams are on top twice. So what I actually need to do is to flip this, and I'm going to put moles on top so that I divide by this whole thing. There we go. Excellent. Grams and H3. Okay, fabulous. That's what I want. So now when I, if I were to go through and put grams times moles over grams, my um, grams will cancel. Grams and H3. Ooh, there we go. Cool. Fabulous. Am I done? No, because guess what? I don't want NH3. I want NO. Okay, cool. So I'm going to keep going. Oh, stop doing it. Stop doing it. Here we go. All right. So it's gonna make me crazy there we go all right cool so i have okay i'm in moles of nh3 so you saw how i got confused it was fine though because i just went and said where am i oh i'm in moles of nh3 but i need to go to no no i almost said no2 but it's no um and so now i'm gonna say um okay cool so uh i need to convert between moles of this to moles of this so this is where i look at my mole ratios and i care about this and this, and that's it. Oh, look, they're the same ratio. We still write it down to keep track of things because otherwise you might get taken off on the final and we are absolutely not going to allow that. Okay, so I know that for every four moles of NH4, three, sorry, my reaction needs four moles of NO. Okay, and let's make sure we did this right. I have one, moles of NH4 are, or NH3 are on top. Oops, I put them on top again. I'm going to flip them. Uh, there we go. Fabulous. So moles, because now I have moles of NH3 on top here. 
boop, strike through. And I have moles of NH3 on top or on bottom here, so they will cancel. In this case, it doesn't matter because they're both fours. But if it had asked for like oxygen instead, you would have had to make sure to, um, uh, it would have been bad if you had done it that way because you would have multiplied by five when you should have divided by five or whatever. And so that's bad. This keeps us on track. Okay. Now, but now where am I? I, what unit am I in right now? I'm in moles of NO. I need to be grams of NO. So my last step is I need to go to the periodic table. And I say, okay, uh, uh, it's grams per mole, so there's 14.01 for nitrogen plus 15.999 for oxygen grams per mole of oxygen. Oh, two, not oxygen, NO, boop. Okay, so I also, again, still hate that this is not one line. Let's make it smaller and I'll just zoom in. Ooh. There we go. All right, so. Ooh. Yeah, all I do is no, I don't. Just kidding. Just say, all I do is sit around and sing to my dog, but that's not true. I'm working also. Um, okay, so I have. Well, is this right? I have grams on top. I want grams on top. My moles of NO will now cancel. Whoop! Strike through. Mole strike through. It's very satisfying to do this on paper, but my iPad is not charged. Okay, so now let's just now we know we set up the math right, so we can just do math. So I can go through and say I have 34 uh, divided. I'm gonna do all the multiplying first, and then go through and do the dividing. I mean, yeah, just because, just in case, right? So 34 times one ooh, times four ooh, times I need to add the 14.01 plus 15.999. Okay. Uh, that's all the multiplying, and then I'm going to divide by what are all the things on bottom. I'm doing parentheses. Uh, over here, I have 14.01 plus 3 times 101. Okay, cool. And what else do I need to multiply by there? Or on the, what else is on the bottom? I have another 4. And that's it. Okay, cool. So let me uh, clean this up a little bit more. Let me get rid of all the uh, things that are added. 34 times 4 times 14.01 uh, plus 15.999. So that is 30.009. Okay, so those are all the things I'm going to multiply on top. And then on the bottom, and this is where you need to be really careful on your calculator. I have it's 14.01 uh, plus 3.03. So it's 17.04 times 4 in parentheses. You could just say, hey, look, there's 4 and 4. I could cancel those. Whatever. You could, if you want to do that, you can. And then your math becomes 34 times uh, 30.009. Uh, divided by 17.04. Wow. Cool. Either way, whatever you do, you end up with your answer being. Oops. Yeah, I guess that's right. Just forgot that. Okay. So you get 34 times 30.009 divided by 17.04. And so your answer is 59. 59.88. <laughs> grams of n oh we did it we got there Wah! you're gonna do amazing i believe in you um and i no n o uh okay sorry about the weird flashes of my well no i don't even i'll just cut out of the video <laughs> everything's fine um it was a garden picture with a weird sculpture don't worry about it okay so uh yeah that's how you do stoichiometry it really sucks i will make another video that it, uh, goes over the um practice problems and i'm gonna go through actually right now this says molecules i'm gonna take out any ones that say molecules so that you don't have to worry about molecules because it oh thank goodness you do not have to have that uh it doesn't look like that's on your test because those that's the 6.02 stuff and that's annoying uh molecules nope cool uh, anyway you don't need to watch me do this haha <laughs> uh okay so you're amazing and i love you and good luck on your desk let me know if you need any more help